Yeah. And uh, Steve, you written any new uh, Actually, new I only tune? got one. I'll do it for you if you want. It's a plane crash song. Yeah. Speaking of, well, before you do that, let me just say, you know, I heard Steve Goodman. Uh, I was listening to do, uh, uh, public radio. Yeah. And uh, they they did uh, they were doing a newscast about uh, some uh, airline uh, particular. This is not this is not that song. Yeah. It is might it? might be about the, the, the. I did something for NPR about the plane a woman named Deborah Amos taped. Yeah. Something about dropping the, the flight one ninety one. Is that yeah. the one? M might be. Well, I'll say well, it again. Okay. Yeah. Maybe say exactly what you call you. All right. It might be news or old news. But... Yeah. I'm saying exactly what you call your uh, a pop record, but sort of. You know, hadn't been one of these since the Titanic. <laughs> Not that there was a need for it, you understand. But. Back in the spring of 79, all of the people were standing in a line. To take a little trip to the California sun on American Airlines 191. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it, but why? That plane fell out of the sky. Now the pilot got on the radio, they know everything about it. Says old hair tower, am I ready to go? They know everything about it. Fasten the seat belt and put out the smoke, they know everything about it. They don't tell that stewardess no hijack jokes, they know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it, but why that plane fell out of the sky? Yeah, they pick up the wheels and they on the run. They know everything about it. When the engine mountain came undone, they know everything about it. The pilot must have known he was in bad shape. They know everything about it. Cause you can hear him cussing on the cockpit tape. They know everything about it. 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 But why that plane fell out of the sky? Now they sent for the fire truck ambulance too. They know everything about it. And by the time they got there, there wasn't nothing to do. They know everything about it. Smoke just as far as the eye can see. They know everything about it. It's from the worst air crash in history. They know everything about it. 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 But why that plane fell out of the sky? out in L.A. at the end of the line, where well, they know everything about it. People were wringing their hands and moaning and crying, as they know everything about it. See them looking up into the smoggy air, as they know everything about it. They try to find a plane that was not there. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it, but why that plane fell out of the sky? Now the government had an investigation. They know everything about it. Well, they gotta have something to tell the nation. They know everything about it. All the king's horses and the president's men, they know everything about it. But they can't put the plane back together again. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. They know everything about it, but why that plane fell out of the sky? Now you can still get a ride on a DC 10. They know everything about it. Gene, they was gone for a while, but they're back again. They know everything about it. They make them a few technological advances. They know everything about it. So you can take your money and you can take your chances. They know everything about it. They know everything about it. Except the lyric, everything about it. Except the lyric, everything about it. But why? That plane fell out of the sky. <laughs> Ha <laughs>
Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I heard on public radio. And when I heard that, I... I don't know what, what the comment after the song was, said something to the effect that you were, are you going to be doing like a regular correspondent type of thing where you're going to be writing particular topical tunes well, I th- for the I news? Well, I think or? the show is called In a Manner of Speaking, right? Is that the name uh, of it? All something? Things Considered. All Things, all considered. things considered, yeah. Shows so, you how hey. smart I am. <laughs> yeah. You're close. That and a dime will get you half a phone call in <laughs> yeah. Chicago. And it costs 20 cents to make a Does call it really? right now. Yeah. 20 cents. Yeah, well, anyhow, oh, yeah. what I do remember is this woman named Deborah Amos came to Chicago and uh, taped me and Jethro playing, like, 11 songs. So it's already in the can, so I guess yeah, this yeah. current stuff that you'll be hearing is something we did about three weeks ago. Right. Mm-hmm. Our guests are John Prine and Steve Goodman. John uh, Prine and Steve Goodman. You're, you're used to working with a band now. I guess you've been with a band for a while, right? Yeah, I got a uh, band out of Chicago started working with me uh, June of last year of 78, and they've just been working out great. Is this the band? Wait a minute, I'm trying to remember when you were at Penn's Landing. Was that, that was last yeah, summer? that's right. We, that was the band I had there. Boy, you were Now close. i got a steel player with them, too. And, uh, is that the steel player who was on your on the album? Uh, yeah, Leo LeBlanc. He's played on right. quite a few of my records. Uh, he's out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh-huh. He's been with Jerry Jeff Walker the last three and a half years, and I was able to, to get uh, him over. To rest him from yes. Jerry Jeff. Yeah, he's just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good good point. And I got a Great. different I got a different keyboard player than I had at Finley and I got yeah, a guy. Howard Levy or something like that? Uh Howard used to play with me, but his, his wife had a baby and he didn't want to go out on the road anymore. I don't know why. So I got a fellow named Bob uh, Hogan with me now. He uh-huh. plays excellent fiddle and mandolin and keyboards. Right. Yeah, he's a real player. I played with him him like nine years ago in Chicago. We were a duet. Steve, you used to work with bands, right? I mean oh, off yeah. and on. And oh yeah. Uh, Whenever I, I can it. afford it. <laughs> yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah. That's right. Think of all the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the amount of money you make, I mean, when you don't have to pay band. And also, also, I guess you sort of, bands tie it down. I mean, you're responsible for all those guys. You know, you got to worry yeah. about where they're going to sleep and accommodations and get on the bus on time and all that stuff. I, I you know, it's nice to be a single because then you just sort of like, you know, come and go as you will. And, uh, oh, yeah. All, all of the above. But yes, of course, all you miss yeah. is the uh, those fills and all those, those nice uh, harmony things that you. I miss having a bunch of people on the road. Man. Yeah. I like to play. I like to have a bunch of people around when playing music. For the music and for the company, or both? Both. Both. Yeah. Yeah. John's fortunate that he has some players that are sympathetic to the kind of stuff he's playing. You know, who can still rock. It's yeah. a very, very interesting thing. So these these are some real players. Right. John, you want to do one of your songs or something? Uh, okay. Something from the new album? Let's do Automobile, Steve. <laughs> There's a song here I started writing a long time ago, maybe like 69. I wrote the first verse to it, and then I forgot about it for 10 years. <laughs> I wrote this when I was a mailman, and, uh, and uh, I used to call him sick quite a bit because it was real cold in the wintertime. <laughs> I thought you weren't supposed to let sleet, rain, or snow stop you. No, but you get, excellent, you. you get excellent sick pay as oh. a mailman. And as soon as I'd accumulate eight hours, I'd come up with a new disease. <laughs> and this was a particularly terrible winter. I got around to February, and I'd run out of diseases. And my grandmother died about four times. <laughs> so I just called in one morning and told my car wouldn't start. And when he accepted, I figured I'd write a song about it rather than go back to bed. February morning, this car won't start today. Better turn the key at 803. Battery passed away inside of my automobile. I want my automobile. I want my automobile. I want to drive it all around this world. Brad getting married in the springtime. Widow's getting married in the fall. I got married in high school. Wouldn't have got married at all to be driving my automobile. Be driving my automobile. Be driving my automobile. I want to drive it all around this world. Everybody 
I said to the new groom, groom, what you gonna be? He said, I'm gonna be a symphony just as soon as I find a key to my automobile, I want my automobile, I want my automobile, I wanna drive it all around this world. I'll do it, John did not do Dear Abby tonight, despite requests. Uh, I'm sure he's not, you know, you must be sick of that song by now, huh? Well, I like to retire a song every once in a while, so when I pick it back up again, I enjoy it. Yeah. I can remember sometimes singing Dear Abby, and I think I sang the second verse three times. Until somebody got to come and step on my foot and get him to sing this third one. <laughs> Who was it that said, oh, Bromberg used to say that he and Jerry Jeff used to <laughs> do terrible things to, uh, what was it? Bojangles? Uh, Bojangles, yeah, because they got so... Disgusted. I, mean, I think Jerry's working on a movie. Uh, they're going to make a movie out of Bojangles. Jerry oh, yeah. Jeff's supposed to be working on it now. Ah. How about that? Jerry Jeff Walker in pictures. I could play Would You Like to Learn to Dance. I could do that. Yeah. Dance. I could do that. Yeah. Is that our? Hey, all right? Sure. All right. I'll do that. This gets too organized, Gene. Let me know. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't want that to happen. Would you like to learn to dance? I could show you that. Got a book here, it's all you need to know. We could draw the Arthur Murray patterns right here on the floor. And all you have to do is follow. Then we'll dance round the room a while. You can lead now if you want to. And I don't mind. There's nothing I wouldn't do to see you smile. Go dancing across your face in perfect time. Dance and cross your face in perfect time. Would you like to learn to sing? Well, maybe some other night I could show you that. Here's an old song that's good for a start. You could sing all the high parts if you really try. While I play along the tune on this guitar and Then we'll sing for a little while Let the harmony go ringing in your mind You sing so much better when you sing with a smile what makes all the notes come out so sweet and high? All 
the notes come out so sweet now. something else again I could show you how to sing and smile and dance Oh, I have no keys to your heart No way to make you take that chance I guess we'll dance round the room again Sing a tune or two to pass the time And smile a lot if you really want to We can try a little loving, I don't mind Try That's Steve Goodman. Uh, you know, just for archives purposes, I want to find out. I mean, I, I've heard this story from both of you uh, at one, in one form or another, but I want to find out how you guys first got together in Chicago. You were, uh, I mean, Steve, you were, you were <coughs> sort of like <coughs> Hello. around the area for a while, and, and oh, John yeah. was sort of new to the area? Or? John, John had rumored to be singing at a place called the Fifth Peg, which was up the street from the Earl of Old Town. And uh, one night, John came into the Earl of Old Town, and I was sitting on the uh, meat locker in the freezer where Earl kept the hamburgers and the boxes of french uh -huh. fries in the back. <laughs> John came into the back room and introduced himself, and that's where we met. But uh, the word of his songs had preceded him all around town, well, all around 1969 and 1970. Uh, a legend before his own time, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But didn't Chris Stopperson have something to do with your first album? Or who was it? There's somebody who was well, involved. Well, Chris uh, helped uh, right for Steve and I both put out our first albums. And Chris went around the country. He was just starting to really catch on. He went around, he was singing songs and telling people about both of us. And just generally helping a whole lot. Right. Yeah. Well, very remarkable for a fellow who yeah. was chasing his own career to uh, literally... Uh, put himself on a limb like that, yeah. Well... You know, he, he had everybody's attention, and he just kept saying everything he possibly could about what had happened in Chicago that week. So, yeah. You know, he was... Oh, you mean he was, he was just nice. visiting for a week, and he discovered both you guys, or well, ran he, into he, you? He was employed at a place called The Quiet Night that a real good guy named Dick Harding used to own. Right. And I, I was the opening act on the bill there that week. You know, they had, like, a local guy. It's like in any town, you know, where there's a club where, you know, yeah, yeah. some artists come through, and they get a local guy to you know, do 35 minutes before he plays. That was me that week. And John was playing at the Earl of Old Town that week. And so uh, I, I had the fortune of actually, you know, sharing an engagement with, with, with Chris in the spring of 71. I see. And his band just all treated us like kings, and we all went over to the Earl to see John play, you know. It's, you know yeah. the, re the rest of us on the back of John's first record. Right. Well, what were the uh, first songs, Steve Goodman and John Prine songs, that Chris Stopperson did? Uh, or, or did he just talk you up? Or did he actually do some of the songs he did? He, he, well, he, he did one of John's in his show. Which one was he singing? He used sing? to open his sets with late John Garfield Blues. Yeah, oh, he, yeah. yeah he, Which is a song I would only sing like once every two months. It's a really low down <laughs> here. He'd open his shows. You know, it would take a road scholar to understand just to the bottom of what <laughs> yeah, well John yeah, the hip is the hip, right? The late yeah. John Garfield Blues. 
That was one of my favorite songs from that album. Really? Yeah. I well, know. I always liked the song a whole lot myself, but I, like I said, I don't sing it all the time because it's, uh, you know, who is well, I never want to cause too many suicides. There is yeah. a guy jumping yeah. off a bridge in that song. True. Yeah. Yeah. John, why don't you do a song? Amazing. You don't have to do that one. I mean, you can do anyone you want. Mm -hmm. um, um, this is a song called uh, uh, One Red Rose in the Bible. Kitchen lad fell asleep on the bedroom floor. Well, me and her was talking softer, and all the time before I lost her, picture sat on top of the chest of drawers. One red rose in the Bible. Rest between the old alphabet. Probably wouldn't believe you if you told me. Well, I never knew, I never will forget. Get dark real early. The dress was soft, the hair was curly. We danced around the table to the old banjo. Rainy nights were made for lovers. We laid in still beneath the covers. And I ain't never felt like that before. One red rose. Just between the holes write these songs about lonely I always get this impression that a lot of John's songs are about lonely people in that same apartment in Chicago somewhere I, mean, I just sort of envision it in Chicago probably you know yeah it's all in my mind yeah John, John's the only guy who lives there writes songs about, uh, about Chicago that sound as much like a cow town as Chicago was at one time you know what I'm saying there's a lot of wide open spaces there for a big old city yeah. Like there's like uh, where the back of the yards is, where the stockyards used to be. The southwest side was a lot of fields right. at one point. I know they got eight million people there <laughs> now, but it's a mixed up city. You know, little just, big country. Just to get back to that story, since we're still in Chicago right now, uh, when you, Steve Goodman, first heard about John, was were you new to Chicago at the time? You had just moved in there? No, I was there for a long time. I just never thought about being a singer for a living. I you just, were just delivering mail, I've right? been playing guitar since I was 14. I just did it for my own enjoyment. Because he used to make up songs. It was easier than learning other people's songs. Steve, want to... Before you, before you play, want to tell us something about uh, uh, touring with Steve Martin? Was that strange or hilarious? I mean, well, he's a gent, you know. That's I, what I everybody would... forgets because they see him jump up and down. You know, and I would gather he's real nice professionally person. make a fool of himself every night. That's his gig, you know, right. is to make the biggest fool out of himself he possibly can. You know, I mean, it's a gig he set up for himself. He's been doing it for 15 years. When you have a sandwich with him or you're just talking about business or, or personal things. Uh, Quiet guy. You're right. He doesn't make you laugh too much, does he? Or does he? No, no, no. Although, like I, although I'll say this now. He's one of the hardest working people I ever met. We did part of this tour on a bus. 
And at one time, we were out for like 24 straight days and playing like two shows a day. And then this guy would have uh, one of the writers that wrote with him, a guy named Michael Elias, and he was writing his TV special with. Yeah. This guy came along for the ride. <laughs> this guy would be doing two shows a night and writing his TV special on the bus in between. I never saw anybody go 24 hours a day at it like that. Wow. I mean, it's pretty amazing. You know, I, mean, I don't... You know, I I I, hope, I wish the guy gets a nice time out for himself. You know what I'm saying? Because he's, yeah, he's sure. a really good guy. And he's just been working his behind off for three years. Mm. Hey, inside Steve Martin today, what I feel like John Gunther. <laughs> It'll be a well, national the guy's an more. institution. Oh, yeah. The guy's an institution. I was lucky to work with him. That's what's up. Yeah. I'm supposed to play something now. Okay. Yeah. Here's yeah. a song by Carl Martin. Carl Martin... He's he, uh, yeah, he's gone now. There won't be two of him either, let me tell you. He's the last guy that looked like him, sang like him. I it's really funny that, uh, Steve, just recently I read something that said that uh, <coughs> jamming with Carl Martin was, uh, what do they call it? They said the, the all-night Carl Martin Festival. And I had a fortune a couple of years ago at the Philadelphia Folk Festival after the show and back at the hotel. Yeah, to sit you with, you got to understand, Carl Martin was a part of a group... Um, Martin Bogan and Armstrong, and, and right. Carl recorded many years back, didn't he? Sure, he made a bunch of records in Chicago in the 30s under the name Carl Martin, of all things. Yeah. He played a, played a bunch of blues songs. And this guy knew every song. I mean, he knew all these old jazz and, and uh, songs. And, well, and the thing that got me is he was born April Fool's Day of 1906, okay? Right. And uh, so I saw him. You know, I didn't meet him until he was in his mid-60s. And he could be the last guy awake at a party. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. All these young from, cats would... From, you know, he would play everybody, drink everybody, smoke everybody, party everybody under the table. He'd be the last guy up. That's right. I was with him at 6.30 a.m., and most of the people were lying on the floor at a hotel in you know, the hallways. And young, he was there. strong. He's still making music. Folk festival types and old Carl Martin. He's sitting yeah. there. Anyway, Carl Martin so passed away. Come on, how just, come uh, everybody don't want to play no more music? <laughs> he was the strongest guy I ever saw. He was an asphalter in the Department of Streets. Was he? Yeah. He paved the Dan Ryan Expressway in Chicago. That was in his 50s he did that. Wow. Yeah, and he's a remarkable old guy. Anyway. Yeah. He treated me great, too. I drove him from Chicago to a couple of Philadelphia. Yeah, for festivals. a while you were you were uh, the roadie. Business yeah, for, I uh, drove Blind Jim Brewer here one year too. In fact, I drove him and Carl Martin in the same car here, and that was that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Carl Martin gave my wife Nancy a picture once of uh, two girls kissing each other a special way. Said, "You don't think there's anything wrong with that, do you?" <laughs> Nancy said, "No." Carl Martin is one of the two or three most amazing people I ever met. <laughs> and he wrote this song, All the Vegetables Get Up and Dance in this song. I don't know why he did it either. By the pale moonlight, all the vegetables give a spree. Put out a sign, said there's dancing tonight, and all the admissions are free. Peas and greens, cabbage and beans, the biggest crowd you ever did see. And when Mr. Cucumber struck up that number, you should have heard the vegetables scream. Oh, the little turnip topped on a backwards flop. Cabbage shook the shimmy till she could not stop. Little red beet shook its feet. The watermelon died with the cockeyed heat. The little tomato agitator shook the shimmy with the sweet potato. And old man garlic dropped dead of the colic. Down at the barnyard dance this morning. Down at the barnyard dance.
The Barnyard Dance, sometimes called Vegetable Song. You yeah, can yeah. Uh, find it on Steve Goodman's album. Is that on the Jesse Jig album? No. No, the one after that, right? No, Somebody Else's Trouble. Somebody right? Else's Trouble. Yeah. And it's also, you can find it on the Martin Bogan and Armstrong sure album. Can. I think that's a title yeah. tune of that album. Yeah, Ted Barnyard. Bogan played wonderful guitar in that band, too. He's a wonderful player, too. Everybody in that band, you know. I love they, the song they do. They've been playing together for 40 years, you know. So yeah. They, it helped, yeah. They had, they had it down. You know? What's that song they do about uh, that zoo? You know, oh, Zazu Zaz. Zazu yeah. Zaz, yeah, Zazu Zaz. Oh, it's Let's Give a Party. Let's Give a Party. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, give it yeah. right here. You buy the whiskey, I'll buy the beer. Which is a nice yeah. sentiment in any, <laughs> in any yeah. city. And um, Howard Armstrong, the fiddler, Yeah. he once said something. I know this is, you know, risky talking about this guy on the radio like this, but oh, he yeah. once said some of the most amazing things I ever heard. He said, Steve, always remember, just like Socrates told Plato, when your opus becomes your onus, then you're out on your anus. <laughs> and that, and that to me is some of the hippest advice I ever heard. You know. Yeah. Who was it who said, uh, yeah. I'd rather have a bottle in front of me, you know that one? Than a frontal lobotomy. Some right. guy in Toronto, I can't call his name, oh. I apologize. Clever yeah. wordplay there, yeah. Yeah, but that, that, was, that was pretty good for, you know, an old fiddler. He came up with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Could have fooled me. He sings in... Uh, Chinese, Chinese, doesn't he? On this Chinatown, <laughs> right. in Chinatown Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, yeah. He was he was in the CBs. He was in the CBs during World War II. You see, he was out there in the Pacific. He picked up a lot of stuff. You know, these guys. You know, they had lives. Yeah, you know, sure not did. just little things that happened to your ears. Right. Yeah. John, you want to do? Uh, want to do something? You what do you do that's old in your program today? I mean, you. Well, it kind of changes from night to night. Uh, you always know, it drives the light director crazy. Um, Why don't you pick something that you that you like from the old days? Uh, okay. That, uh, hmm. It's good that, it's good that uh, John Prime revives them. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Maybe something Steve. Wait, Grandpa was a carpenter. He hasn't played yeah. that in a long time. Yeah. That's a request. Okay. I get to make them in person. I got right, them. right. This song here, I got to thinking about my grandfather one night and just, uh, uh, I was like having just some real vivid memories of him, so I know how lousy my memory is. And I, I took out a piece of paper and just started writing down things so I could, like, when I think about them, I could remember some of these things. And I noticed after a while, like, the first line, the ninth line started to rhyme, and the third line, the seventeenth line. So I just rearranged them, and they became a song. Like, Church on a Sunday, and he 
make me willing to stain glass in every window, hearing needs in every view. Grandpa was a carpenter, he built houses, stores, and banks. Chase smoked kettles, cigarettes, and hammered nails and planks. He was level on the level, shaved even every door. Jackson Brown, you're listening to WIOQ, Philadelphia, 102 on your FM dial. You see, a song like that, that, that brings back memories about my grandfather. He smoked Raleigh cigarettes. <laughs> oh, Remember yeah. those? And he, my, you know, I guess you must have lots of grandfathers. For my grandfather saved thousands of Raleigh coupons. They used to have coupons you could redeem for tennis rackets put, or whatever. Yeah. Put Gene through broadcasting school. Yeah. That's right. No, no the, the crazy thing is he, he died and he died and he never, my, and my father found all these, all these coupons, boxes and boxes of coupons. He never redeemed them. He just saved them. Is that so? Oh. Yeah. Amazing. I read an, an article, it, was, it really cracked me up one day. I was reading an article <laughs> in uh, some local publication and they were interviewing John and they said uh, something about David Bromberg and John was quoted as saying, yeah, he met David on my program. A long time ago. I don't know if you remember that. Is, yeah, was, uh, David was in here playing, or, and uh, I come walking in and met him on the air. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was going to ask you to do John Garfield Blues. You feel up to that? Okay, sure. This is from an old Prine album. This is Stump the Songwriter here, folks. Right. Black faces press against the glass where rain has pressed its way. Windblown scarves in top down cars all share one western trait. Sadness leaks through just ain't cheeks from white holes to damn stored juice. Probably don't know they gave me these late John Garfield blues. Midnight dawn, Franklin Street, and lampposts, bulbs were broke. For the life of me, I could not see. But I heard a brand new joke. Two men were standing upon a bridge. One jumped and screamed, You lose. And just let the odd man hold me. Oh, late John Guy. With his conscience at night Young kids sleep with their dreams While the middle of you Sit perfectly still And live their lives in between I'm going away To the last resort In a week or 
Well, the fish don't bite. But once a night, by the cold light of the moon, the horses clean, the nightmares dream, the dead men all wear shoes. Cause everybody's dancing. Those late John I was just thinking a couple days ago that uh, I wonder what what uh, swing time tunes uh, Steve Goodman has revived because I remember you know you, you pick out some good ones like uh, It's a Sin to Tell a Lie and uh, just about every album has had a, except for the last one has had a swing tune is that right? Yeah, you got didn't leave one off on purpose. No, no. but uh, is there play, any? Uh, uh, let's play the San Antonio Rose. This is what Texas music sounded like by the time it got to Albany Park in Chicago. Try to work the steel guitar part in there too, didn't you? <laughs> that was old uh, Bob Wills talking, right? I guess. Yeah. When I was growing up, I used, there was a Take guy I used to always go, "Aha, San Antonio." I never knew what he was talking about. He was, I never knew where he got that from, you know. And then, just a couple years ago, the guy who's got a band now that does that kind of stuff is Merle Haggard. Really? He's got a band. A Texas swing type thing? Yeah, and it's just like an old time Texas swing band. He's got old. All these old guys that used to play with Wills, you know. Those yeah. guys. No, he's not out with them. Gordon Carroll was this guy that used to play with Cash. And then uh, he has Tiny Moore, who's oh, yeah, like in Mandolin Jethro is. Burns League on the Mandolin. That's a nice that's album. Possible, did you, you know. produce that album, by the way? No, Dave Grisman did. David and Grisman. more power to him. Boy, what a nice a whale album. Of an album. Tiny Jethro Moore and Burns. Jethro Burns on uh, Flying Fish, I guess, right? Yeah, I think so. No, wait, maybe no? Kaleidoscope. 
right? That could be a West Coast. I have it with me you somewhere. I'll, we'll check it out. Somebody <laughs> could check it out, I guess. But Grisman, to his credit, uh, got these guys together, and he put together a crummy rhythm section, too. He had uh, Eldon Shamblin play guitar, and he played it just like a piano player would play. Do you understand what I'm saying? He, he, played, the, it was, uh, he played all the rhythm parts on uh -huh. one guitar. It was like a two-handed thing, almost. And he had a terrible bass player named Ray Brown. It was horrible. The Ray Brown? I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. The Ray Brown. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he had Ray Brown and he had Shelley Mann. So he got all these right. old, the old jazz, jazz players right. together in one, in one room. And they actually had a session. The prettiest thing on it's a mandolin trio that Grisman plays on to some old Bill Monroe thing that I can't think of the name of. Went on that album? Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just gorgeous. I like Jethro's tune. You ever heard that? It? Yeah, it's yeah. It's a real nice yeah. uh, rag, well, swing time thing. I didn't know too much about Tiny Moore, though. Tiny Moore is a jazz player more than he is a country music player, right? As opposed yeah, to Yeah, but he's he been with all those country bands. He's been around. Yeah. yeah. I wish I knew more about him, too. Sure plays great. Let's just, um, um, if you don't mind, uh, I'm just checking out these requests here for Steve Goodman and John Prine. Sweet. 